Gilligan's Island star gave the crew more than expected. Gilligan's Island ran for three seasons on CBS, from 1964 to 1967, and despite being canceled almost 50 years ago, the series enjoys a devoted following to this day. The adventures of the seven castaways stranded on an uncharted island have been passed down through the generations, captivating viewers of all ages. Here are a few things you might not have known about Gilligan's Island. No outfit repeats. The cast of Gilligan's Island had to adhere to a strict no outfit repeats policy, which resulted in some pretty outlandish costumes. For the show's third and final season, the wardrobe department went through over 1,500 different costume pieces. Influencing his character Although the show had a strict no outfit repeats policy, one outfit did make a return appearance. In the episode The Producer, Gilligan wears the same plaid shirt and green pants he had on in the pilot episode. This was done as a joke to appease series creator Sherwood Schwartz, who was not happy with the way the show was progressing. Despite the lack of repeats, some of the show's iconic costumes were actually inspired by real-life people. The costume for The Professor was based on Albert Einstein, while Mrs. Howell's dress was inspired by actress Tallulah Bankhead. Equal Credit in addition to the facts above, another fun fact about Gilligan's Island is that each of the seven characters received equal credit in the show's opening credits, even though some of them had less screen time than the others. This was a rarity for a TV show at the time and was done as a sign of respect for the actors. Reason for Half-Mast The flag at half-mast is a sign of respect for the dead. It may be flown on government buildings, military installations, and vessels of the United States Armed Forces. It's often flown on public buildings in the United States to show respect for someone who has died. Inside Joke Although it was canceled almost 50 years ago, Gilligan's Island still enjoys a devoted following to this day. One of the reasons for this is the show's clever humor, which is often hidden in the background details. For example, in one episode, the professor is shown conducting a radio out of bamboo. This was an inside joke, as the actor who played the professor, Russell Johnson, actually worked as a radio technician in real life. Similarly, the show's production crew often placed jokes and references in the show that only eagle-eyed viewers would pick up on. So if you're a fan of Gilligan's Island, be sure to watch each episode closely. You never know what you might find. Ginger's Bottomless Bag In one episode of Gilligan's Island, Ginger is shown with a large bag that she's never seen without. When asked what's in the bag, Ginger always evades the question. This became something of a running gag on the show, and many viewers came to speculate as to what could be inside. Some believe that Ginger's bag contains all of her clothes, while others think that it may be full of money. However, no one knows for sure what's inside. Perhaps one day we'll find out. Gilligan's Island star gave the crew more than expected In a recent interview, Gilligan's Island star Dawn Wells opened up about her time on the show. According to Wells, she was always a team player and was always willing to lend a hand to the crew. In fact, she often went above and beyond what was expected of her. For example, Wells recalls one time when the cast and crew were shooting a scene on the beach. The weather was hot and sunny and Wells noticed that the crew was struggling to keep cool. So she took off her shirt and offered it to them. I just said, here, put this on, and they did, Wells said. They put it on right away. Wells also mentioned that she always tried to stay in good spirits, even when things were tough. I never complained, she said. I was always happy. It's clear that Wells was a valuable member of the Gilligan's Island team, and her contributions will not be forgotten. Aging Cast Although the cast of Gilligan's Island is only in their early to mid-twenties, some of them are starting to show their age. For example, Dawn Wells, who played Marianne, is now 78 years old, and Bob Denver, who played Gilligan, died in 2005 at the age of 70. Similarly, Tina Louise, who played Ginger, is now 82 years old, and Jim Backus, who played the professor, died in 1989 at the age of 76. So as the cast starts to age, it'll be interesting to see how they continue to interact with each other. Only time will tell. Radio Transmissions The following are some of the most notable radio transmissions in Gilligan's Island. The Castaways Find Radio in the first episode of Gilligan's Island, the castaways find a radio and use it to send out a distress call. However, they're not very successful as they can only transmit in short bursts. Skipper's SOS Later in the season, the skipper sends out an SOS signal that's picked up by a passing ship. This leads to the castaways being rescued and returned to civilization. The castaways build a radio. 
In Season 2, the castaways built their own radio and used it to communicate with the outside world. This allows them to receive updates on their rescue efforts and eventually brings them back home. A Wild Ride The castaways on Gilligan's Island had no idea what they were in for when they were stranded on the island, and viewers of the show never knew what to expect either, as the writers were always coming up with new and exciting storylines. One such storyline was the Wild Ride episode, which saw the castaways taking a roller coaster ride on the island. The episode was filmed at the theme park in California, and it was a huge success. So if you're a fan of Gilligan's Island, be sure to check out the Wild Ride episode. You won't be disappointed. A $20,000 Skirt In Season 2 of Gilligan's Island, the castaways built their own radio and used it to communicate with the outside world. This allows them to receive updates on their rescue efforts and eventually brings them back home. One such update is about a $20,000 skirt that's being auctioned off to benefit charity. The skirt is made of luxurious materials and the bidding is sure to be fierce. The castaways are excited about the prospect of owning such a beautiful piece of clothing, but they know they won't be able to afford it, so they come up with a plan to win the auction by using their radio to communicate with the outside world, they can get people to bid on the skirt for them. Their plan works and the castaways are able to buy the skirt for a fraction of its original price. They're very happy with their new purchase. All 99 Episodes Gilligan's Island ran for 99 episodes from 1964 to 1967, and despite being cancelled almost 50 years ago, the series enjoys a devoted following to this day. The adventures of the seven castaways stranded on an uncharted island have been passed down through the generations, captivating viewers of all ages. Everyone's Least Favorite Thing even though the castaways on Gilligan's Island had a lot of fun together, there was always one thing that they didn't enjoy – having to deal with Gilligan. Gilligan was always getting into trouble and the castaways had to constantly bail him out. He was also a huge burden on the group as he never contributed anything to their survival. So it's no surprise that the castaways always looked forward to the day when Gilligan would finally leave the island. And although he did eventually leave, they were all very happy to see him go. Free Vacation the castaways on Gilligan's Island were very lucky. Not only did they get to enjoy a free vacation on an uncharted island, but they also got to come back home in the end. Elf Crossover One such storyline that was never actually aired was the Elf Crossover episode. In this episode, the castaways are visited by Elf, the alien from the TV show Elf. Elf is curious about life on Earth and he decides to pay a visit to the castaways on Gilligan's Island. He's shocked by how primitive their lifestyle is, and he eventually decides to take them back to his home planet with him. The castaways are reluctant to leave their home on the island, but they eventually agree to go with Elf. They're excited about the prospect of visiting a new planet and seeing new sights. However, they soon realize that they made a mistake in trusting Elf. He's actually a dictator who ruled his planet with an iron fist. The castaways are forced to live in a totalitarian society, and they quickly realize they made a mistake in coming with him. Thankfully, they're eventually able to escape and return to their home on Gilligan's Island. They learn a valuable lesson in trusting strangers, and they're grateful that they were able to return home safely. Dramatically Different Pilot Although the castaways on Gilligan's Island had a lot of fun together, things didn't always go smoothly. In fact, the pilot episode for the show was very different from the rest of the series. In the pilot episode, the castaways are visited by two women who are looking for a place to stay. The women are very different from the castaways, and they quickly start to cause problems on the island. The castaways are uncomfortable with the women's presence, and they eventually decide to get rid of them. They build a raft and send the women away, never to return. This version of Gilligan's Island was not well received by viewers, and CBS decided to retool the show and make it more similar to the rest of the series. The castaways were replaced by the seven characters that we all know and love, and the rest is history. Two Cartoons even though the castaways on Gilligan's Island had a lot of fun together, there were two cartoons they never got along with, Mr. Magoo and Top Cat. Mr. Magoo was a bumbling old man who always managed to find himself in trouble. The castaways were constantly having to rescue him from his own stupidity and they were always annoyed by his presence on the island. Top Cat was a streetwise cat who always managed to outsmart everyone he came across. The castaways were also constantly having to deal with him and they didn't have much respect for him. Although the two cartoons provided some comic relief, the castaways would have been much better off without them. If you could be stranded on Gilligan's Island with any celebrity, who would it be?